Hey, good evening, everyone. Hello, my name is Ugochi Iloka. I work for WBRC Fox 6 News. Good day, Alabama in the mornings. I'm a news reporter and a fill an anchor there. You might have catched our segment on this program tonight on Good Day Alabama Extra. I'm really excited to be moderating tonight's event. This is all about making sure that we have perfect self-care, and promoting a healthy lifestyle. So we're going to get straight into it. We know that maintaining healthy habits when it comes to eating and being physically active and adopting self-care habits is not easy. I'm a mom. I get it. A working mom. It's definitely tough. However, making healthy life really does make a difference. And we understand with this style, change your life, CYL squared program. This is an opportunity for people to really take advantage of the tools that they have. So the year long program is a part of the CDC's National Diabetes Prevention Program and making these changes recommended in the program can not only prevent type two diabetes, but it will help prevent and manage other chronic conditions as well that have to do with your health. So we will provide more information about the CYL squared app at the end of this segment, so stick around for that. But first, we have several people, I mean, rock stars on today's channel that really can give their perspectives on committing to a lifestyle of wellness and self-care, which is what today's theme is about, right? So let's introduce our guests. First, we'll start with Paula Green-Smith. She is the Chief Training Officer for the Black Women's Health imperative as the CEO for Urban Health Resource. Her organization is one of the founding members of the Black Women's Health Imperatives Program Provider Network, offering their lifestyle change program in Detroit, Michigan. Hey, Paula, welcome. Hey, how are, how you? are you? Thank you, Good. thank you. Thank you so much. So we'll move on to our next panelist. We've got Kimberly McNair Brock. She is a board certified holistic health coach and a chef and an owner of Biddy's Living Kitchen in Birmingham, Alabama. Woohoo, Beham. <laughs> ah, <laughs> glad to be here. I represent <laughs> Curly. She demonstrates her culinary expertise by offering workshops, cooking classes, and chef demos where clients can learn how to prepare fresh, healthy, and delicious plant based meals in a little time, which I love as a working mom. So I'm excited to hear about that as well. So thanks, Kimberly, for coming on with us. Thank you for having me. Awesome, awesome. So move, let's move on to our next panelist. We've got Demetria Pollard. She is a preschool teacher and a dance and fitness instructor. That's my kind of thing. I love Zumba, <laughs> so I'm ready to hear about this. She, in 2019, she was awarded the Spirit of Excellence Award by the state of Alabama, and she leads a small community community fitness group called Journey, Journey to Lose, where she inspires, motivates, and encourages others on their journey to finding, to finding their healthier lives. So she is also a CYL squared lifestyle coach. So give it up for Demetria. Demetria, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Hello. We're so excited to have you. Thank you. So we're going to move on to our next panelist. This is Dr. Nicole Peoples. She is a board certified physician in internal medicine based in Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, specializing in, in functional medicine. Now she is a board certified in, in integrative and holistic medicine and is certified by the institution functional medicine. So we have a doc in the house who's really going to break down well for us. So thank you so much, Dr. Peoples, for joining us. And thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you. All righty. So we're going to move on. We're going to start with Paula first. Okay. Paula. Yes. We're yes, going to yes. start with you. Thank you so much again for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. Awesome, awesome. Um, you know, wellness and self-care, really, really huge, right? So we want to start first with asking about the Black Women's Health Imperative Lifestyle Change Program. We talked a little bit about it on our show on Good Day Alabama this morning, but we want you to get more depth. So how does it help to change the way many Black women see themselves in their health? Okay, so the program helps women to see them themselves as healthy beings because, you know, so many times we get caught up in just doing what we have to do to get to where we have to be and do what we have to do in life. And sometimes our health just kind of gets pushed to the back burner. So the participants of our group, um, our groups actually come in and they meet with a lifestyle coach and a
Hey, Paula. I, Hello. I, I lost you there. Who is this? So their body weight, at least. Um, and then also to increase their physical activity to at least per week, because based on a study that proved that individuals that made those lifestyle changes could prevent or delay the onset of type 2 diabetes um, at greater levels than by going on a pharmaceutical, namely uh, metformin mostly. Uh, individuals that have made those changes in the program also prevent other chronic diseases because they just get overall healthy. And we do that by providing strategies, helping them to feel better about who they are and hear other stories from other participants because it becomes like a support group. Others get to share their experiences. We get to learn from each other's experiences and build on those. Um, we just try to just, you know, tailor make this evidence-based program to meet the needs of the individuals in the groups. So our participants typically feel great um, by the second week of the program, really, because they're starting to feel better about their experiences and trying to get healthy. They're feeling better about the strategies and how feasible it is to just make these small changes to get to long-term longevity and sustainability of health. Yeah. I mean, I, I just love the group effort. And I think that's yeah. where the lifestyle coach too comes in. You've got an accountability partner. Yes. So does everyone in the program get a coach? How does that work? So there's one lifestyle coach per group. However, mm -hmm. that lifestyle group, that lifestyle coach works with the group and provides strategies and, you know, and information and, and facilitates the discussions and the information sharing in the group. But then outside of the group, the members are able to contact that lifestyle coach and work with that lifestyle coach on their individual needs as well. So you get the, the benefit of the, the group support, but you also have that that support of the individual that can work with them on more private issues as well as on more customized or, or specific is, uh, personal, personal or individual issues. So you work with the group, but you also get that one-on-one -on -one time. That's nice. Yes, yes. So what kind of lifestyle changes have you seen among participants? What what have been the oh, wow. just the changes that stand out for oh, you? Oh, big things. Oh, gosh. We've had individuals. One of my favorite ones to talk about is I had a person in a group. She wasn't actually in my group. She was in one of my lifestyle coaches group that was eating corned beef every single day. Her office was right next to a, a deli. And so wow. she loved corned beef. And she was eating these corned beef sandwiches every day for lunch. OK. And, and they happen to be dynamic, you know, ginormous, whatever word you want to call for these huge. They had some little brand name for this sandwich, but it was huge. And she um, you know, we teach people that this isn't a deprivation program. It isn't a program, a, a diet program where you have to restrict yourself on, on things. We tell we teach our participants how to enjoy eating enjoy their lives, but also make the lifestyle changes necessary to sustain, it, you know, to have a long life, to extend their lives. And yeah. so we talked to this woman about, okay, you don't, you know, you don't have to give up your corned beef, but let's look at some other options for it. And some of the things that we suggested to her, uh, because the lifestyle coach working with her came to me and said, look, we got a problem. I don't know how to tell this woman she can't eat this corned beef every day. So, so we got her to kind of break down, back it up and, and eat maybe three times a week. And we also introduced her to other things that could substitute for that same flavor she was getting. So we started, you know, we introduced her to smoked turkey instead of the corned beef, which is way less fat. And then we start talking about portion control. So yeah. one of the things I was pleased with with her is she came back to us and said, you know that I don't even like corned beef anymore now that I taste it. Fit. <laughs> so that was one of the good ones. So we teach meal swapping, you know, meal makeovers, changing up recipes that you love that aren't that healthy for you. They don't love you. So we mm -hmm. teach them how to prepare them differently, how to change or swap out the ingredients um, so that they can continue getting the joy they get out of that, but just kind of changing it up. One yeah. of the other things we like that comes to mind when you ask me about someone that really made a big change is I think about a person who was in our group and she hadn't, you know, had you know, done anything like physical activity for so long. So we taught her, we said, okay, you know what, you know, when you are watching your favorite TV shows, cause you know, you love your certain shows, you keep talking about them. So on every break, we want you to just, every time there's a commercial, stand up and just walk in place during those commercial breaks. And then 
um, you know, the next week, let's kind of get up to, you know, trying to do a little bit more during those commercial breaks and then extending, you know, working out beyond or moving more beyond those commercial breaks. And that individual was someone who actually didn't do much activity at all. By the time she finished the program, she was working with others on, girl, I got my walking club <laughs> and I like to dance. So I'm dancing. I'm dancing while I'm washing yeah. dishes. I mean, she became like our our superstar in trying to figure out more practical ways to get movement in. And she went from being completely sedentary to just a really active person. And we have a lot of that that goes on in our groups. And that and that's really exciting to see how yeah. motivated she was to do that mm -hmm. for others. And so really the overall question that a lot of people want to know here, this joining this group, what do you think is the biggest takeaway and advantage really when it comes to changing your lifestyle and making it more healthy? I think the biggest advantage is, again, you know, some people join the group because they are at risk of diabetes. They've been told they're at risk of diabetes and they want to prevent diabetes. And so they make the lifestyle changes necessary to do that, but they benefit from in all other aspects of their lives. Their energy level is up. They start looking better. So their self-esteem is up because they're getting the compliments and they're, you know, they're, they're, you know, putting a little pep in their step and getting the move, you know, a little bit more groove in their move. So a lot of other benefits like feeling better, being happier, living, you know, a longer life and being able to be more active with their family members, uh, being able to help others. Those are all benefits that come along with what looks like kind of almost to some people, we have to convince them that it's not self-serving to take care of yourself and do what you have to do so that you can live a longer life. And then they go from doing it for themselves to being able to recognize the benefit for not just themselves, but everyone around them. So those I are love the biggest that. benefits. Paula, thanks so much. And just stressing, taking that time, right, for yourself yeah. and managing your health. So thanks, Paula, for joining Thank us. You. We'll see you later at the round table at the end. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we have Kimberly McNair Brock next. This is about food. <laughs> this, this is the part of the show that's about food and everybody's, you know, we're eager to hear about what you suggest in terms of how we can eat healthier, but still love what we eat. So Kimberly, thanks for joining us again. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So I see that you specialize in holistic nutrition. Mm -hmm. What exactly is holistic nutrition? And how is it different from traditional nutrition? So holistic nutrition um, the, is the whole being. So um, if you think about uh, your primary food is actually like your relationships, uh, your spiritual practice, um, you know, your exercise, your career, your lifestyle, relationships. So things like that uh, are your primary food and they actually lead to what you eat, they make, they determine what you eat, which is actually your secondary food. So <clears throat> based on, you know, your emotions or whatever triggers that may, you may have in those other areas, those determine, you know, how you feel about yourself, you know, what you are going to ingest and that sort that type of thing. Yeah. So in terms of, I heard this principle and it just sounded so intriguing to me healing through food. What is that about? So we have uh, three hashtags that we're really passionate about. Uh, one is harvesting healthy habits. And uh, by harvesting healthy habits, um, I mean, just little things that you can do in your lifestyle every day, like, um, you know, the water choices that you make, there is a difference there. Uh, eating not pro not eating processed foods, mm -hmm. uh, eating whole foods, fruits and vegetables, um, and there's a myriad of other things that go along with that. You know, recognizing uh, your products that are on your ingredients. You know, um, like nitrates. You know, if you're going to eat deli meat, well, let's eat some deli meat that does not have nitrates in it. Um, and so noticing that when you eat that deli meat that does have it in it, you have joint pain. And so just understanding those types of triggers and like, oh, okay, wow, I didn't realize that happened to me. And so by harvesting healthy habits, the next step is to reverse your palate. So, um, you know, I can remember growing up and loving Pepsi and I can remember when the taste of Pepsi changed. And um, instead of using cane sugar, it was 
high fructose corn syrup, you know? And mm-hmm. so um, it would just became like an addiction then to just drink that because this was not a natural product. You know, the body didn't recognize that as real food. Mm-hmm. So thinking about reversing our palate back to what it used to be, you know, when we were growing our own food and, uh, you know, everything wasn't st- shelf stable, you know, you get a bag of chips and the expiration date is two, three months from, you know, when you're picking it up. But, you know, mm-hmm. if you cut a potato, the, it's going to go bad, you know, within 24 hours, it's going to turn brown or black. Okay. So that's kind of reversing the palate, learning and understanding, okay, gosh, you know, like I'm addicted to this, but this isn't even real food that I'm addicted to. And then through that process of those steps, you can begin to start healing through food and you can start looking at different foods and how they can help in different areas to help heal the body. So, wow. Um, and, and I, and I, I want to say that I've actually experienced that when I ate something specifically and felt a certain way and became a certain pattern. And I was like, I can't eat that anymore. So people have to be observant what they're putting in their body and how it makes them feel. So thank you for breaking that down. Last question is, you know, and acquiring minds want to know, including myself, what's your biggest advice for people who are having challenges making a changes to the types of foods they eat? You know, we always hear about portion control. Oh, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But Mm -hmm. if it's not that great for you, you know, how do you wean off of it altogether maybe? Right. I I would say to experiment. Um, It's very important to get outside your comfort zone and to, you know, go shop or at a different store that you aren't normally that you don't normally shop. You know, Um, be open minded. Go to if you don't go to Whole Foods, go to a Whole Foods and actually look at some of the produce and say, okay, well, I've heard them talk about, you know, X, Y and Z before. Let me look on Pinterest, let's say, and find a recipe for that. Okay, that looks like that would be pretty good and and buy it and try it and, you know, and do those types of things. Because, uh, you know, if we were eating chicken and it didn't have any seasoning on it, we wouldn't want it, you know. So it's all about sort of manipulating vegetables into having flavor. So you still have to use seasoning and spices and herbs in plant-based cooking that it is it still tastes good so that's where our hashtag is uh where healthy is delicious you know so because people think that healthy is not delicious but it can be i love that hashtag i need to look that up (laughs) (laughs) there thank you so much kimberly we appreciate that insight uh we're excited to hopefully try and a big takeaway too i got from this just like you have to try you have to try these things right see what you like Yeah. <laughs> thanks so much, Kimberly. <laughs> we'll see you at the round table. So thanks so much. All right. Next, we've got Demetria Pollard. She is a preschool teacher. We mentioned that before and a dance and fitness instructor. I'm excited about this part. <laughs> I do Zumba two to three times a week. <laughs> I love it. That is my self-care. I can tell you that right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we want to get other people inspired. You're also the lifestyle coach with the CYL Squared app. So yes. what made you decide to become a lifestyle coach? Well, all my life, all I've ever wanted to do was help, encourage people, inspire, and motivate people. So in 12 years ago, I was overweight. So I decided to change my lifestyle. And I started a journey with having people follow me along. So as they followed me along, I wanted more people to understand how much fun this could be. So I started a group community, a group in my community, in my hometown, and it's called Journey to Lose. And what we do, what we started to do was just keep each other accountable. I did dance fitness there. And as soon as I did dance fitness there, more people joined. So one of the one of the um, lifestyle coaches, Tanya, I will call her name. She gave me a call one day and she said, Demetria, would you be interested in being a lifestyle coach? And I asked her, I said, um, wait a minute. Tell me what that entails. What what is it all about? What do I have to do? Yeah. And I thought about all I was doing already. And I said, well, is this something I can do? Am I good enough to do this? So. Mm-hmm. After she explained everything to me, I went home and I meditated on it. And I just prayed about it. I was like, oh, I might be able to do it. God, just let me know what direction I need to go. Mm -hmm. And what happened, and let me ask that question again. The question was, what made me decide to become a lifestyle coach? God told me I was able to do it. And I just did it. 
And I just did it. I felt like I was good enough to do so. Wow, wow. And did the inspiration, obviously, helping others, when you became a lifestyle coach, talk to us about your experience about bringing participants to join the group. Was the inspiration that motivated you or? Well, the participants that came in to the group, um, I do have a class a week and we were strangers. You know, the participants that we had, we were strangers. We didn't know each, we didn't know each other. So I had to break the ice actually telling my story, you know, mm -hmm. telling them who I was, why I started the journey in the first place. So as soon as I told them that story, that broke the ice and warmed them up. So now we just have an amazing family where we meet once a week and they're able to call me, text me. And, and in this group, let me explain, in this group, I had to, I had to fill out, figure out who they were. I realized I had a group of women that love to dance, mm. a couple of men that love to dance. So as I felt that out in the group, I made up a line dance. And so we play games in our group because of that. You know, they have to have 150 minutes of workout each week. They are surpassing that. A lot of them are going over that because the dance is six minutes. They have to practice. You know, before we get on the screen, they have to show me how good they are. So <laughs> they decided to pick the song, and it's a New Orleans swing song, and we just have such a good time. So yes, that's right, a New Orleans swing song. <laughs> and we had such a good time and they enjoyed it and they actually are burning calories. Mm. Mm. I, I love that. I, I do Zumba, as I mentioned, three, four, mm. three to four times a week. And it really just started just like a total stranger, as you uh -huh. mentioned, and just moving and just being excited. And yes. it gives me something to look forward to. It, it, it is my self-care. And I go mm -hmm. to a gym that bonus has a daycare center. So I really don't <laughs> get to be distracted while, you know, letting loose with people and, and getting my yes. health back and my activeness back. So that's amazing. Yes. Um, what kind of challenges do you face as a coach when you're working with people? You know, people go through phases and they, you know, they lose interest or they're going through something and they don't come anymore or maybe they don't feel like it. How do you pump those participants to come back or go ahead? Okay, in lieu of what's going on in the world today, you know everything is virtual. And I have a lot of participants that are my silver and my gold. And this was kind of hard for them doing the Zumba classes. And I'm not the most tech savvy person in the world. So when they came in and I had to coach them into being a part of the, the Zoom lifestyle, mm -hmm. we had to make a little bit, we had to have fun with it. We checked, remember the Brady Bunch? We thought about the Brady Bunch. Yeah. And we called ourselves at one point, we tried to call ourselves the Brady Bunch, but we changed our name. They want to get in just to see what's going on in those classes that day. We are the Crunch Bunch. We are, now, oh. we are now the crunch bunch and they have to get in because they want to see what new um, thing I added to the dance mm -hmm. or they enjoy the sessions because the sessions are now created where I, when they read their part of the session, I ask them to please call their own names because a lot of them have lived exactly what's going on in these sessions. So it's kind of hard. It's, it, it fills your heart to know that everything in those pamphlets, everything that they're learning in these books, these are things that they're actually going through right now. So yeah. the stories are their stories. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Well, Demetria, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Keep thank moving, you. keep inspiring people, and we will see you at the round table. Thank you thank so much. You. All righty. So we are going to move on to Dr. Nicole Peoples. Dr. Hey. Peoples, hi, good evening again. Hey, good to see, be here, thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. So we see that you specialize in holistic medicine uh, for a lot of us you know, who don't really know what that is, <laughs> if you can break it down uh, in the simplest form. What is holistic medicine and how are treatments and recommendations different from what one may call a traditional physician? Absolutely. So I was, you know, I'm a traditional doctor who was um, decided to go into doing more integrative and holistic work. And the difference for me is it's a lot of differences. But one of the major differences is that in traditional medicine, we're really focused on um, identifying symptoms and diagnosis, diagnosing diseases, and then treating with one or two modalities, meaning uh, either uh, pharmaceutical drugs or surgery. 
Um, in holistic medicine, we're really looking for the root cause of illness. So a lot of people, when they get sick, they want to know why they're sick. It's not just a name, not naming the disease, but what made them get sick in the first place. And so particularly when we're t talking about chronic illnesses like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, cancer, strokes, all of those sorts of uh, diseases, they... Um, develop over time. It's not like you wake up one morning and voila, cancer is there, or diabetes is there. It's something that has been occurring in the body for an extended amount of time. And so part of a holistic approach to health is really addressing the things that cause disease to develop. And so those things would look like, we talked a, a little bit about nutrition and diet, talking about movement and activity, but you know, one of the biggest ones I see is going to be stress, toxin exposures, um, sleep, uh, relationships, um, uh, infections or inflammation, gut health. So there's a number of things that actually cause illness. And if we can get to the root of those things, then we can actually prevent disease from e either developing or help reverse disease and reverse the processes that happen in the body that cause disease. So um, treatments that would look different. Obviously, I'm not, I don't, um, shun pharmaceutical drugs or surgery when they're needed. That's absolutely a part of um, my practice, but it, it's not, that's not enough. You know, we have to look at all of the factors that might influence. And so lifestyle is a huge part of it. So I'm listening to these other ladies and I'm hearing them talk a lot about, you know, uh, health coaching and fitness and all of these things. Those are the types of things that we would talk about, but we do that looking at specific labs, we're looking at um, your specific issues that are going on, and that way we're able to develop a program that is unique to you and making the lifestyle changes that you specifically need. Yeah. When, when you mention, you know, looking at factors surrounding your life that could be triggering something health-wise, mm -hmm. uh, I think we're all guilty when we go to the doctor legs hurt and chest hurt, you want to know right away, but it could be other things going on. Is it a stress test that's used or what What exactly, how is that determined about the other factors that could be contributing to whatever health problem is going on? So, so it, what's really different about my approach to, or holistic approach to medicine is, is that to me, it's not that important what the name of the disease is. It is often to my patients. They want to know what is, you know, what's the cause, what's the name of right. the disease, name that name that disease. Um, <laughs> for me, it doesn't really matter so much what the name of the disease is as much as it matters all of the things that are going on in your life and how we can just modulate them or change them so that to something that we know is going to be productive and produce health. Um, and so, you know, yes, if you come in with a, a symptom such as chest pain. I'm going to work that up in the same traditional sense um, manner, but then you know we'll also do a, a battery of tests. Let's look at what sorts of things um, lead up to heart disease, and we also know that there are things that we can't test for. So we know that stress is a huge contributor to uh, uh, heart disease. We know that um, diabetes. We know that. Um, high blood pressure. We know all of these things contribute, but then what are the lifestyle factors that contribute to that? So it's like peeling back the layers of an onion and we're taking, you know, we might start at the very top, which is your symptom, but we want to keep pulling back until we get down to the root cause. And so we are going to start treating things that may oftentimes seem totally unrelated to what you came for, because we're able to identify the things that we know contribute to chest pain or diabetes or high blood pressure. And that, again, are the things that I mentioned. So we're going to get you moving. We're going to be looking for other factors that may contribute. And again, I have a list of, you know, a litany of things that we know um, cause. And so we're going to pick out the ones that we think are most pertinent to you and then address those first. Yeah. So what are some of the biggest health challenges that you see relates to Black women in your practice that you see the most, I guess? Absolutely. Well, we have, you know, in the African-American female community, we have a number of diseases that are disproportionately affect us and other uh, communities. Um, but, you know, the things that I think that really need to be emphasized that we don't necessarily address enough is stress. Um, the majority of people, it doesn't matter what you're coming in for, the majority of uh, the thing that drives a lot of our illnesses is stress. We can't change the way that we're eating if we're stressed. We can't change our behaviors if we're stressed. Um, we uh, oftentimes allow ourselves to take on more than we can actually handle. Um, and over time, that causes problems. But then other things, obviously, would be things like diabetes, obesity, um, 
uh, heart disease um, is another big one, fibroids. So these are a lot of diseases that over, you know, um, affect black women. But again, the root cause of those things, um, I oftentimes think it's, you know, the foods that we're eating, um, our sedentary behaviors, our uh, inactivity, um, and oftentimes our inability to understand how stress plays a role in our health and how to actually address those things. Yeah. Well, I mean, stress, you hit the nail on the head with that one. Yes. Yeah. Juggling, trying to find balance. And, you know, that's what this is all about, too, fitting in self care and taking care of yourself to manage that stress as well. So, um, we, we kind of, you know, a big thing that we are wanting to know, too, is your advice to patients who are having, having challenges making healthy lifestyle changes. And some of the other panelists kind of touch base on this, but I guess from a medical standpoint, what's your biggest advice to them when it comes to that? Well, actually, I would say everything that everyone said. I think the major thing is, number one, realize that this is a lifestyle change. It's not, you know, a one, you know, shot deal. Like you either got to go to the gym and that's it, or you're gonna, you've got to change your diet immediately. But to really realize that you're actually making changes that are going to affect who you are and who, how you see yourself. And if you, you start to think about it in that way, what type of person is healthy? and work your way towards becoming closer to that, then it kind of changes your dynamic and your relationship to the behavior change that you're trying to make. But then also, you know, joining a group, having support, I think is a really big part of it. Having a doctor who actually understands that you're not just interested in pills, but you're interested in lifestyle and who can look at that and really help you make the changes that you need to make. In addition to looking at, you know, the medications that you might be on, um, and helping you find a ha happy balance between those things. So I think when it comes to behavior change, you really need to, you know, take it out as a lifestyle, a lifelong project. And you also just have to find people who are going to support you through that process. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Peoples, that we appreciate you for really sharing your perspective on this. It's, it's huge. We really needed to hear a lot of that information when it comes to holistic medicine. So thank you. Yeah. All right, panelists, it is time for our round table. <laughs> we are, um, we're gonna ask a couple of questions. I'm actually gonna start with uh, someone who is tuning in to the program right now. And her, her question is for Paula. So oh, Paula, okay. is there a charge for the CYL Squared app? And is it available in other states? Is the CYL squared only for those who are pre-diabetic? Um, and then they asked if you've been diagnosed with type two diabetes, can you still sign up? Okay. Wow, a lot of questions here. So let's All right, let me start. Let's start with the first one. Sorry, okay. let me break it down. Let me okay. let me rewind it. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, well, I can answer the first one. The the CL squared is is free. That app, correct? Yes. That the way we have a program now that it is free for her right now. Yes. Okay. So that's and it's a, available. It's a good time to join. So people should get on board. Get on board now while it's free. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's available, you know, everywhere. If you have a phone. Yes. And, it's actually, um, we're, we're launching our program in four areas, but it is available. If you can log in from your phone, we're going to, we're, we're running them with lifestyle coaches in four different areas. However, okay. people can log in from wherever they are. Got it. Got it. So like the in-person is just the four areas, but the app with other. No, the in-person um, we have in several areas throughout the city. The app, I mean, I'm sorry, throughout the country. The app okay. is, is again, that's the beauty of the app right now. A lot of us went kicking and screaming into the, the virtual world, but it does open up opportunities for so many people wherever they are. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you so much for clarifying. And is the CYL squared only for those who are pre-diabetic? So for, yes, there are ways around that. Let me say this. The program is initially for people who are at risk of diabetes. And so we do look for that. However, if we look at the, the needs what, that that individual can qualify by risk tests or clinical diagnosis, most people are eligible by that risk test. Okay. Because it's factors like being overweight, being over a certain age, having a family, uh, having a sibling or a parent with diabetes. So there are so many factors in that risk test. And when you, you're going to get more information about that so that you can um, go on, you know, go to our, our link, our websites and go to the link and you can take the risk test. So even for those individuals that are not eligible for the program by being uh, at risk of diabetes, 
they can participate with others. You know, they don't have to be an, a direct member of the program, but they can log in with others or be a, a be in the room with someone else who's logging in that is eligible. So it yeah. helps to get other people involved. Well, and if you've been diagnosed, no, this is her question again. Um, if okay. you've been diagnosed with type two diabetes, can you still sign up um, after you have it, I guess? The program, not typically, no. Okay. But let me just say this. There's some loopholes that we can work with you on. So don't be discouraged. Go in and complete that information. Get in our system. Go onto our website. Complete the information. And then we will follow up with you and figure out how we can help you out. Okay. So it sounds like there are, there are ways. I know there's technicalities, but it seems like you guys are open to helping uh, people. And that's still. the key. It's a lifestyle change program to help individuals get healthy overall. Right. And so we, we are so committed to our work that we don't, we usually find a way to help everyone that can't, that we can. So we well, don't want to discourage anyone by saying, oh, if you already have it, don't call us. You know, no, get on board, call us, sit, send your information in, we'll follow up with you. Okay. okay. Um, another, another question for you, Paula. Sorry, people. Wow. <laughs> I know you're popular right now, but we'll shift gears to someone else here in a bit. Um, is the, is the pilot is in four cities, but the program is open to individuals outside of those cities as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, that answers that question. Okay. Yeah, that was a quick and easy one. <laughs> Moving okay. on. Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Dr. Peoples, I wanted to ask you about sleep. I feel like we didn't touch base on that. Um, yeah. How... How significant is that when it comes to lifestyle changes? And, you know, we hear about fitness, we hear about eating, but sleep is that, if everything else is managed, but that isn't on the back end, is this something that people can still work around to being a more healthy self? Well, so absolutely. Sleep is, I think, one of the most important. I mean, they're all really important, but sleep to me um, is one of the most important for several reasons. Number one, um, particularly right now in this COVID era, you know, um, lack of sleep actually can affect immunity. So um, if you're not getting enough sleep, at least seven to eight hours a night, then your immune system is depressed. So definitely from that perspective. Um, also, it affects weight gain. So it will um, alter your hormones. So we don't really talk a lot about how all of these things are interrelated, but your sleep patterns actually affect your hormones, which can also drive up one of the hormones that causes a weight gain, like insulin. Um, mm -hmm. It can cause a hormonal imbalances, particularly in women when we talk about estrogen and progesterone. So um, absolutely sleep is a huge part of that. And you want to, you know, find ways um, number one, identify if there are any factors that are keeping you from sleeping. So things like sleep apnea um, would be a diagnosis that might be interfering. But there can also be routines that you have, lighting that can be adjusted um, that would affect um, how you sleep, how long you sleep, and you know whether or not you can go to sleep at night. So there are a lot of ways that you can adjust your sleep habits to enhance your overall health. Um, the other thing I should mention um, is longevity. So we also know that if you get less sleep, your likelihood of living um, a shorter mm -hmm. amount of time too. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Well, there's a wake up call for some people there, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. <laughs> um, so right now we want to ask people who are tuning in, submit your questions. Uh, we've got literally a rock star panelist here that can answer your questions about healthy lifestyle. So now is the time to do it on our round table. But in the meantime, I've got some questions still. Um, and anyone can really chime in here, but I can single people out on the panel, but, or you can chime in. Um, what role does your emotional wellness play in committing to a lifestyle of wellness? Who wants to answer that? Who wants to go first? <laughs> I will. Um, and, and I'm not going to go too long because I know I've already had enough questions, but it's so major and it's a big part of our program because the emotional wellness piece is what helps the participants. If, an, if a participant isn't feeling great and it isn't doesn't have emotional wellness, then it's too, they can't really um, understand what's going on and understand what's causing them to, to, to not be able to make the changes that they need to make. So um, we have to be able to help look at their environment and look at the things that are standing in the way of them making the lifestyle changes. They need to understand their triggers um, and if you're not feeling good and not understanding what you're going through, it's just a level of frustration that 
adds another barrier to the, 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 the success, your success in making those lifestyle changes. So I wanted to start by saying that your emotional wellness is key. Mm. Okay. And so I'm going to defer to some others to add on to that, but I know, I know from just your comments that you agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I would say to pursue joy, pursue mm, happiness. Mm. Um, that is so important. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, there's so many contributing factors going on right now and just in general mm -hmm. that could steal away from that. And so we have to uh, take the time to uh, protect our peace. <laughs> yeah. and, protect our uh, peace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, just for, you know, mental clarity, safety, all of the above. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Kimberly, we're going to stick with you. We've got... Um, We've got a question here for you, then we'll move on to Demetra. She has some. Um, Kimberly, how do you encourage individuals uh, to get out of their comfort zone and try new mm. food? You know, people like what they like and they get nervous yeah. about trying something that's so unfamiliar. How would you, you know, encourage them to, to do that? Get out of their comfort so, zone? So, there are all kinds of apps, like there's a meetup app, and uh, wherever city that you're in, you could go on there and um, there are all kinds of food groups, you know, that you could join. Uh, so at least if you're not vegan or you're not plant-based, that's fine. But uh, they have meetups at different restaurants and you can go and just try different things. And mm -hmm. being in a community of other people or just being around other people that are also, you know, doing the same thing or being adventurous uh, helps to, you know, kind of get the fear, kick the fear out and, um, you know, kind of do what the people around you are doing. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, bring a buddy. <laughs> and you can just, try in a group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Um, so, because there's so much out there. There, You know, we had a restaurant and uh, um, a couple of years ago and, you know, people were coming and they said that they wanted to come because they wanted to uh, patronize us, you know, and as a black business. And so they said, uh, but I just really don't want, they didn't want the salad. They just were scared, you know, to do it. And I, you know, staff and everybody's like, you know, I promise you're going to enjoy this. So they got mm -hmm. it. They taught them how to, you know, order mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And then, you know, they would come up afterwards or we would come to them and say, how is everything like, oh my God, like the best salad that I've ever had, you know? Oh, so just those little that. things, you never know how you'll be surprised and you might mm -hmm. like something. You know. Awesome. Um, last question for Chef Brock for right now. And then we'll move on to Demetria. Um, what is your favorite healthy meal and what is your ideal healthy snack? Oh, gosh. Um, that was from Quenisha Sanders. Hi, Quenisha. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so my favorite healthy meal uh, would probably be just about anything Asian <laughs> style. Um, I love to you know, like today I had some brown rice and I did like a, a vegetable brown rice, but just incorporating tons of vegetables uh, into it and um, just learning different techniques on how to cook. So it's not greasy, it's not soggy, you know, I mean, but it's just full of vegetables, very little minimal oil so that you're tasting the vegetables. That's just mm -hmm. like comfort food kind of thing mm -hmm. for me. And I don't remember what was the second part of that. I don't healthy, remember. A healthy snack. Healthy snack. Healthy snack. Mm. I am not a big snacker. Mm. Um, but, I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do like my occasional chip. I'm, you know, so. But um, I don't. I would say some nuts. Some okay. uh, some uh, favorite nuts and uh, some dried fruit. I okay. uh, would be good. And those are good things to have too when you're out and about to not tempt you to go eat fast food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you just carry you a baggie with some of your favorite, uh, you know, nuts and seeds and, and dried fruit and bottled water. So you won't be, you grab a handful of it. I promise you, after you've eaten that, you it will have curbed that appetite and it will make you, help you make a better choice. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Did, did I mention oh, something about uh, snacks as well? Yes, please. Yes. yes. So um, I think so. I think the diet has to be personalized for everyone. And yes. a lot of people are, you know, they listen to what's on the internet or on social media about what it's good for or healthy for people. And what's healthy for one person may not be healthy for another person. Um, and particularly when it comes to snacks, I think because 
one of the things that I used to hear all the time is that you have to have six small meals a day. You've got to mm -hmm. eat all day. And the problem with eating all day is that you never give your body a chance to rest um, and your hormones a chance to rest. Mm -hmm. So every time you eat, your hormones spike up and your body has to deal with that. And that causes inflammation and stress on the body. Mm -hmm. And so for some people, if you're very active, if you're working out, if you're a diabetic um, or if you're pre-diabetic, for some of those people, your body has adjusted so that it's really hard for you to go several hours without eating. But really fasting between meals, meaning going a couple of hours between meals is ideal because it allows your, your hormones to get back into sync. And if you think about it, I remember when I was growing up, um, you know, we had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There weren't like a whole bunch of snacks in between. This idea of snacking is a more new novel sort of thing within the last 30 years. And so- mm -hmm. I don't want people to think that snacks are a must. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have snacks. I'm just saying that if you're in that mindset that, oh, I'm supposed to eat every two hours, that's because your body has adapted to eating every two hours. And so you you start to have cravings every two hours. And so mm -hmm. part of making lifestyle changes that are um, sustainable is by changing how your hormones respond. And the only way to do that is to stop snacking. Yes. Wow, that's, yes. Good. So, that's good. Thank you. May I add to that as well? So thank you, Doc, because that's one of the things we push in the program is we, we customize the program to meet the needs of the individuals. Mm -hmm. You start with understanding your own body. You must know your own body. So what worked for someone else, even someone else in the group, the same mm -hmm. strategy that, some, that may work for another group member may not work for you. And yeah. so we stress that, and that's the benefit of that coach being there because the coach actually asks, uh, we usually ask our participants, we require them to track food at first. And, and we mm -hmm. try to keep them doing that throughout the entire program. Track their food so that we as coaches can look at what they're eating. We can figure out the triggers. We can figure out, you know, um, what help them learn their body and figure out what works for them. I love that you said, Doc, that, that not, you know, the people are moving towards this, oh, I'm supposed to eat six meals a day and all that, because that just doesn't work for some. And there are some others, like my daughter is one that does graze like that all day long. But <laughs> you, you need to really know your body and accept it. It's just like, you know, you know what kind of shoes you like, you know what feels good on your feet, you mm -hmm. know what products work on your hair. You got to learn your body the same way. And mm -hmm. one of the other benefits to the program is that we do in our, in Detroit, we have a one of our biggest programs, one of our biggest extra activities with our program is the meal makeover feast, where we look at the meals and we take the most unhealthy recipes and we remake them in healthy ways. And we recruit members to our group. Sometimes we do orientations and that's the that's what we give people to try to eat at those orientations. You know, a lot of times people will come for the free food and they get there and they eat it. and We don't tell them it's healthy. Until we get to the end of that program, like they have chowed down on those healthy mm -hmm. snacks. The very That's people smart. that say, I don't like vegetables, are some <laughs> of the ones that throw down and, and, and asking you how to prepare it that way when it's over. Yes, yes. Okay. Speaking mm -hmm. of lifestyle, Coach Demetria, yes. uh, we've got people asking you, how do you motivate fitness groups uh, that you work with uh, to get excited about exercising, especially if you're a first time person trying it out? Yeah. Well, the first thing I do is I- You only have to ask this. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing I do is I ask them what music they like. See, in the group, good music is what always them. push people to just do. So we last about 45 minutes. We do um, dance fitness and we do um, circuit training. So in the dance fitness, they pick their own music. They pick their own music. So this is your song. Come on up and let's enjoy it. I I- come up with the routines. I teach them the routines and sometimes they can even lead, um, lead them. If I'm late, half of the time I've seen people start without me leading routines that I have created. <laughs> so <laughs> that is it. the most fun. That's the, the best thing ever. So my favorite thing is actually creating the routines and having them actually participate in helping me with the routines. But the routines have to mean something. It's homework. Are we, what are we working? When you come up with this routine, what part of the body are we working? What are we doing? Mm -hmm. Please tell me if you got enough um, cardio in that. Did you get enough ab standing abs in that? Did you get enough arm workout in that? Tell me what this routine works on mo more. So that's, I like for them to be um, a part of the creation of the routines. I love that. And what about people who don't have rhythm or, or think they can't dance or can't follow the steps? <laughs> 
Wait there are people asking us, like, how do I get involved? If I There's a number <laughs> involved. There's a number involved with no rhythm. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, hey. two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> one, two. Let me explain to you. You can teach rhythm. You can teach rhythm, I'm telling you. You can teach it. One, two, one, two, three, four. And when they get that one, two, they realize, oh, I can dance all along. There you <laughs> go. Nobody okay. taught me that rhythm was actually a number <laughs> a live lesson right here guys right there <laughs> thanks so much Teresha. Now, dr You're people welcome. people want to know dr peoples i'm sorry um demetra uh real quick we'll get back to you here in a bit um mm. about fitness and the lifestyle coach and, and dancing and all of that but mm. dr dr peoples people are asking how do you manage um an individual who's determined they need Medication to feel better when physical activity, eating better would work better for them. How do you typically advise them after that? So, um, again, you need to, it depends on the person. Um, and some people may need medication in the beginning, right? So, obviously, if a lifestyle and diet is going to be better for someone, um, then it should show improve within your labs over time and how you feel. So if you're requiring medications in the very beginning, you start to make the lifestyle changes and then you start to not needing it. That's where a physician comes in to help, you know, taper you off of those medications. Um, mm -hmm. But for, motivation is also a really big thing. If someone's not willing to or not ready to make changes, um, we can encourage you, but you have to want to do it. And if mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people self-select, particularly patients that come to me, um, if you're a person who is like, give me a pill, I want a pill, I don't want to make any changes, well, then I'm not going to be able to necessarily make you make changes. Um, and so you really have to, you know, find a good match um, when it comes to, you know, what you want to do. So if I can help you find something that you want to do that you didn't realize was actually going to make you feel better and you start to feel better, then that will motivate you to continue. Um, and, and just like she was saying about, you know, um, you know, with working out, a lot of people don't want to work out. But mm. oftentimes when we're talking about health, it's not always the 45 minute workout that you do with that's most beneficial just moving throughout the day so oftentimes just getting people up and out of their chairs mm -hmm. not sitting for 40 um for hours mm -hmm. at a time it's actually better for people who are active throughout the day than someone who is sedentary and sits all day and then goes to work out for 45 minutes so yes. you really want people to yes. get that movement throughout the day um and you know if you want to do an additional workout on top of that then you can but that's not really what we necessarily need to focus on in the beginning we need to focus on number one what you want to do what you're capable of doing and then finding things that you may not know are good for you that you don't mind doing and then helping you do those Mm. Well, there you go. She's going to have you try other options and just mm -hmm. the medication and make sure it's long lasting because we don't want it to be a temporary thing. It's a lifestyle change. So mm -hmm. that's what I got from you, Dr. Peoples there. So uh, Chef, Chef Can Rock. I, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I just wanted to ask um, to say, state that in the program, we really try not to even say workout, exercise. Mm -hmm. We try to stress just movement, physical Ooh, activity, like get that. moving. Mm -hmm. Because it, to, to say workout means it's just a stigma attached to it. And yeah. people think, oh, my God, I got to get this workout. And I'm already stressed. I already have too many <laughs> things to do. And now you want me to get a workout in, too. So we said, <laughs> break mm -hmm. it out. You know, just move. It may mean park further out, walk in rather mm -hmm. than park close to the door. It may mean you start taking the steps more. You just do more movement and build up. I love what everybody else is saying about that. And I love uh, d that Demetrius said, you know, she asked people for their their favorite uh, music because mm -hmm. everybody I think everybody I'm a dancer as well. And I think everybody likes to dance. They just yes. are afraid of how they look mm -hmm. dancing. So <laughs> everybody has a move, a, a, their move. And, to, and and if you can just get them to do something, it's mm -hmm. just it, it helps them with the program because you can't do one without the other. You need the physical activity as well as changing the eating habits. Awesome. And then I'm sorry. Ahead, in the program, we encourage them, just like she said, to stay mm -hmm. active, just to move. just stay active and just move, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I encourage them to listen to the music. I get participants sending me music every day, every mm -hmm. day. Okay. And they're just sending me music, telling me this is what I did today. I did this dance. I followed this. I, I went to the Wellness Coalition page and I followed that workout for five minutes. And I, of course, she said, we don't like to say workout because mm -hmm. 
of course it does sound like work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> work, work is just so hard. I call it a dance party. <laughs> And yeah, exactly. But we just want them to stay active and enjoy doing it. Yeah. Want to do it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Chef Brock, you know, they talked more on, on fitness here, too, and eating. But a big thing people had for the question that they had for you is how do you get your family on board with eating healthy with you so that you're not cooking different meals? Because that's a big challenge for a lot of moms and wives, right? Their husbands. You know, they like specific types of food. They're not really on the healthy street just yet, mm -hmm. but you want to get your whole household involved and want to get the kids involved. But that can be a challenge. You don't want to sit there or you don't have the time to cook all these different meals. So what works for you? So um, that was a challenge for me when I <laughs> first got married. Um, and I was finding that I was fixing something for myself, something for my parents uh, and something for my husband. And so it just got to be a lot too much, mm -hmm. you know? And so now I just prepare it and, you know, if they, I'm not going to fix two meals, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, everybody pretty much is open-minded in my family. My husband is coming along. <laughs> He's come a long <laughs> way. Um, and so like he Gross. would not, I'd say, Oh, do you want something? And he'd say, no, but he maybe had never had it or, you know, mm -hmm. that had it the way I was going to prepare it. And so he said, no. And I just say, okay. And I would fix it. And just, he would see me enjoying it or smell mm -hmm. it and want to try and say, oh, wow, this is good. You know, so you just have to just go ahead and do it. I would say like rip yeah. the bandaid off, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. because that they're going to enjoy it. They're going to feel better. And that's been the testimony that I have gotten from people that I have helped do the same thing. Rip the bandit off. Yeah. Like <laughs> especially, especially when you're a foodie. Especially mm. when you're a foodie. Like, <laughs> like me, I'm a foodie. And one mm. of the things um, with my participants, I always tell them to do the hand test. Make sure that you, when you fix your <clears> food, <throat> that it's enough to fit in the palm of your hand. And then I always say, work up to whatever it is you want to eat later. Like, did mm -hmm. you earn that scoop of ice cream? If you didn't mm. earn it, why are you having it? Did you <laughs> earn it? And they always say, oh, yes, I earned this seven days. I mean, you know, so it's, it's really fun oh, actually wow. listening to them work up to what they want. You know, yeah. nobody's saying you can't have your favorite foods. Me, mm -hmm. I'm a pescatarian. I don't eat. Um, I don't I eat seafood, but I don't eat a whole lot of other stuff. I don't eat the meat, you know, part. But um, I try to encourage them to put less of a lot of things in their diet to mm -hmm. start slow by taking away one thing that you know is a problem. Take away yeah. one thing. It's one day at a time, but take away. Take away. Yeah. And see how much you can take away each day. Yeah. Each day. It's one day at a time. <laughs> That's a and good start. I well, say, when it comes to children, um, and this is, I'm, my, my family, they they don't get options, unfortunately. They don't get all <laughs> and I'm not a chef, so you know, I'm you know, I'm doing the best that I can, you know, trying to cook things that people will like. But um, what's really important for me when I'm you know trying to teach my kids how to eat is that it is a lesson, right? It's not mm -hmm. just about eating, it's about them growing up with a palate that's going to be diverse and willing yes. to try a lot of yes. things. And my kids, you know, oftentimes, number one, because they don't get options, they either eat what I make or they don't eat, and they will always <laughs> eat. They will always err on the side of eating. And so if it's broccoli, if it's whatever, they're going to end up eating it. Um, but if you give them options to eat things like potato chips and hot dogs yep. and pizza yep. all the time, then number one, their palate's going to grow up to like that. Yeah. Um, and then number two, they're not going to they're not going to choose these other things because they they don't realize that they can actually be delicious. And so yeah. I think really making it easier for both you as an individual, but also as your for your kids by taking out foods out of your house that you don't even have to think about it anymore. You don't have mm -hmm. to argue with them about it. It's not in the it's not in the pantry. We I don't buy a lot of things that are in the grocery stores. I, I really shop on the perimeter of the grocery store. I stick to fresh produce. I stick to um, things that are not processed. And so when you go to my pantry, you're not gonna find potato chips so that you can't choose that as an option. So mm -hmm. my family just has to sort of figure out what to eat that is in there. And I trust the food that I buy. And if I'm mm -hmm. the person shopping, you know, everybody else has got to follow mine. 
I love that. If it's not in the house, uh, then that's a good start, right? <laughs> I agree. I agree. I, I, I was blessed not to have that issue because I have a kid that always liked healthy food. But I think, like Doc said, it's because of what she was exposed to. Mm -hmm. And so she just ate what was there. And so my child used to eat green beans like potato chips because that's yeah. what she, she had around the house. But yeah. I love something Chef Kimberly said about reversing your palate for those people that have established those habits and need to try to you know, get, make the lifestyle changes, you know, make the changes to, to healthier eating. And that is, you know, if they could just start tasting things that that are healthy and taste better, eventually you don't even want it. You know, you yeah. start reversing that palate. Mm -hmm. I think about how I used, I'm an ice cream lover and I used to love just regular full fat mm -hmm. ice cream. Now mm -hmm. it's so thick and it's just icky in my mouth. It's mm -hmm. too sweet, it's yeah. too everything. And I had to reverse that in my life. Mm -hmm. So I just think that those gradual changes and introducing them to things that are, are swamps, because I'm a queen of swaps. You tell me anything, especially sweets, because I'm a sweets fanatic. So if you tell me something sweet, I can tell you how I've come up with a substitute for that. <laughs> yeah. And now that's, that substitute has become better. It was a substitute for me originally, initially, right. but now it is better than, you know, even the candy apple I used to eat. I love candy apples. Now a little bit of peanut butter with a slice of apple gives me that same flavor and it's healthier mm -hmm. for me. Awesome. So guys, we're going to shift to self-care. Okay. Um, we, and anyone can chime in here, but what does self-care mean to you and how are you taking care of the woman in the mirror? So yourself, um, a big thing is, you know, work, we work for mom, a lot of us and juggling it, finding that time for us, something that makes us feel good as well as getting our healthy back. How do we how do we manage that? What's your biggest advice to that to people who struggle to find that time for self care, especially women? I'll, I'll start. Ooh. I think um, you know. I think therapy needs to be normalized. Um, I think one of the things that you can the best things that you can do to um, for yourself is to talk to someone who's a professional to help you kind of work through whatever issues you might be going through because we're all going to face challenges. We all face mm -hmm. challenges all put things on ourselves that we don't necessarily have to carry. Um, and I think if we can get to a place where we're sort of normalizing therapy as something it's that as a self-care, as something that we do because we love each other without the stigma, we love ourselves. Um, so I think that's one of the things um, for me, you know, I love walking. I love taking, you know, a run around um, my neighborhood daily if I can. Um, and just finding those little things that you enjoy that yes. you can implement into your daily routine um, or your weekly routine. It doesn't have to be every single day and it doesn't have to feel like a punishment. I agree. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to feel like a punishment or a prescription. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Oh. Oh, I was saying like that, a I delay just think it shouldn't have to feel like a punishment. I loved what you said earlier, um, Ugochi, when you said um, that Zumba is your self-care. Mm -hmm. So many times people think self-care means I have to do something really drastic or different or big, or it means I've got to go pay for something that I can't afford. And self-care is, is just finding your space and your happy spot and, and making sure you commit to it like you commit to everything else for everyone else. Mm -hmm. And and that's something we stress. And so I, I agree with um, therapy for one, if you can normalize therapy, but is a mm -hmm. big deal. And also just finding the things that you can do for yourself to feel good. It may be just uh, work and put in my schedule that once a week, I'm going to take a hot bath instead of just showering every mm -hmm. day. I'm going to take that hot bath. I'm going to sit in there. I'm going to relax and just, you know, turn on my music and kick back. Um, it could be something as simple as I make sure I walk every other day or whatever, mm -hmm. but just find practical ways to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to squeeze in that time. Mm -hmm. and even with kids, um, just I'm a single mom, single working mom. And um, I used to feel like so guilty. Like, you know, my daughter needed something. I feel like I got to drop everything. So I learned to manage, like, you're going to be okay for 10 minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go in here and take a moment, you know, mm -hmm. whatever whatever that might be. And we have to do more of that because if we are not our best selves, we can't take care of the others too in our lives. So I think that's so important, right? Squeezing that and finding a gym that has the daycare that keeps them for two hours. So you get that, you know, time in the hydro chair, whatever you need, right? So uh, that is all incorporated, I, be I believe, in finding that uh, self-care. So um, 
We did have someone ask about uh, any success stories that you guys wanted to share um, in terms of just participating work with either in the program or, you know, uh, oh, for Dr. People, the patient or Chef Brock or you know, some people who tried your food. Any success stories you want to share? So, yes, um, we have a meal plan uh, that we've done and, you know, cooking for people like that sort of like in their homes you get to know them pretty intimately and uh you know because you're cooking for them every day you know and so um that along with a 21 day uh heal through food journey that i've done a few times um we've had people that have lost 20 pounds um they just tried to go plant-based for 21 days and we had a specific focus for each week um, and actually one was a gentleman and uh, he's ex police officer wow. and uh, he's he also lifts and you know lifts weights and he, he hadn't felt that great like ever you know he never thought that he could have a meal without meat you know and we have people that have different issues uh, like you know candida uh, that being reversed acid reflux uh, all types of things just by you know, eliminating, you know, certain things out of the diet. So, yeah. Anybody else have any? We have so many from the Black Women's Health Imperative. My program, my company, Urban Health Resource in Detroit is a part of the Black Women's Health Imperative Network, which is the, the sponsor of this whole program. Mm -hmm. And throughout the country, we have so many success stories. So I want to take this opportunity to say, please go to the website because you can get all kinds of success stories from <laughs> yes. there. But also, um, I could talk about individuals, uh, so many in Detroit, but I can also talk about the fact that I, we have so many people that have gone through the program and have become lifestyle coaches because they have made the commitment to make the lifestyle changes for themselves to get healthy. And they have maintained those changes. And so they become lifestyle uh, coaches. That was the first qualifier for them. They went through our program, they completed it, achieved their goals. And then they became lifestyle coaches to help others. And so out of all of our success stories, those are the ones that come to mind first because they they have you know made that change for themselves or made the changes for themselves and they continue to do so by helping others. And that's I think that's a major incentive for, for some people getting in the program that you can not only get yourself together, but you can start helping others and get paid to do it. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And guys, you can find more information about about this program, this app that we've been talking about yes. uh, for this entire show on the website. So you can take it off here and learn more later. Uh, yes. Dr. Peoples, I see you got your hands full. <laughs> Do you have any last remarks? Um, and Demetra, any last remarks? Uh, Chef Brock, we already heard from Paula. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. I just would like to say um, to everyone out there watching, just please take time for yourself and realize that you are more important than anything else. Your mm -hmm. health yes. is more important than anything else. Please. And just take time for you. And then as you're taking time for you, realize other people are watching you as well. And as mm -hmm. they watch you, they'll follow along as well. Family members, coworkers, when they see that you are maintaining a healthy lifestyle, when they see that you're changing yourself, they will follow along and they'll ask you questions. And they want to be a part of that because getting healthier makes you happier. Yes. And you'll watch exactly how it changes your day every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Excellent. And I just like to say that also saying the word no is a full mm -hmm. sentence. And so <laughs> yeah. In, in doing that, you know, sometimes we have to carve out that space for our self care. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, we have to tell the ones that we love, you know this is my time don't come in the room or whatever the situation is because we have to have it because we're the ones that take care of everyone else so you know just blocking it out ahead of time is it works awesome Anybody, talk to people, anybody I, else? Okay. Yeah, I just was going to say, you know, know that you have a lot more power than oftentimes people give us credit for. Yeah. Like you have a lot of power over your health. You have a lot of power over um, the diseases that you develop or don't develop and that they're not always, you don't have to actually find, have a doctor to fix you. You can fix mm -hmm. yourself. And so um, it's nice to have supportive people and the people around you, but know that you can be empowered, that you have the power within you to, mm -hmm. to make the changes that you need to make to make yes. yourself feel better. That's right. um, yes. So I would just leave you with that. 
Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much to our panelists, you guys, for sharing your stories and about healthy lifestyle changes and just self-care. We really appreciate it. Everybody watching at home, the questions came in. They appreciate you guys. And, you know, the Black Women's Health Health Imperative, definitely want to thank our sponsor, ARP. And a uh, special thanks to our imperatives, uh, the Black Women Health Imperatives partner, Wally Health Services here in Tuscaloosa, which is where I am hosting from and moderating this from. But thank you so much again, panelists. Now to our viewers watching, thank you so much for joining in. We appreciate you guys just listening to this dialogue and being a part of it and hearing this feedback and advice to take control of your health and your life, and making sure you're squeezing in that self-care as they mentioned. Uh, so to our viewers, we hope you find, we hope you're able to listen to uh, the journeys here and the stories. And the next thing we want to close out with is the Black Women's Health Imperative, a special message. So take a look and stand by. The Black Women's Health Imperative's popular lifestyle change program is going virtual. CYL Squared is all about healthy lifestyles in a community to help you connect with like-minded people who understand it's a journey, not a race. Are you looking for health tips, cooking demos, and wellness support? Look no further. The app allows you to participate in the program right from home. And you have your very own lifestyle coach. Interested in nutrition? Managing stress? There are resources for overall health, live events, and more. The BWHI app also has communities where you can find your tribe. No matter where you are in your wellness journey, you will enjoy the CYL Squared Lifestyle Change Program offered through the BWHI app. Visit our website today and request information on how to join the virtual program.